My name is Jared Roney from Advantage Feeders. Today we're going to be talking about getting started with creep feeding and what we're going to show you today is an experiment that we've got going on at our farm. So we commonly get asked what, what's the best type of feed to use when we're creep feeding and there's lots of different factors that go into it. So we've set up an experiment with eight different groups. Uh, each group has got about 55 twin bearing ewes and We've just marked there at 90 to 95 lambs per group. So each of those groups, um, the ewes are getting fed for another couple of weeks with, um, through a feeder with straight wheat. And the main purpose of that is to help train the lambs onto the creep feeders, but also the ewes are going through peak lactation and we wanna help support that um, milk production, particularly in that first four weeks of uh, lactation when the, the lambs are really small. The different feed types, we wanted to use some things that are really practical in farmers and other feed types that were brought in. So they all have some pros and cons and come in at different costs and some farmers are gonna have some of the feeds already available on their farm. So that makes the whole process a bit easier and other ones are brought in. So that might suit different farmers um, and their levels of convenience. So Why creep feeding works is because the introduction of starchy feeds into the rumen makes a particular type of volatile fatty acid, that being butyric acid. And why butyric acid is so important is because it not only passes through the rumen wall to contribute to the energy of the animal and production and growth, it also, some of it gets held up in the rumen wall and that's really key to developing the rumen from a smooth and pink wall that really doesn't absorb any energy through it to having uh, being quite brown and with papillae that are growing on the surface wall. So that's the real key. And once we get a rumen transitioning that way, all of a sudden they've got the ability to eat and digest and grow from the grass in the paddock. And that's where the real key to profitability is is really getting the conversion off the grass, but setting up that young rumen with the creep feeder to start with. For the setup of the creep feeders, we've got it pivoted down to the third bottom hole. So we've got quite a small gap here, so the ewes definitely can't get their heads through and the lambs easily stick their heads through and get access to the feed. As far as the adjusters go, We've got the upper adjuster set at hole six, so it flows through quite high. And then the width with the bottom adjuster, again at hole six. So they've got really easy access to get to the feed. In feeder one, we're using cracked wheat. So we can see in the ration here, visually about maybe 70% of it looked cracked. But when we pick up some of the whole grains that don't appear to be cracked, and then you just um, play with them, all of a sudden the starch is really quite available. So some of the pros and cons of this feed are, when we look at the cost, we've been buying in wheat at $320 a tonne. You could probably say the rolling cost is around $30 a tonne. So overall $350 a tonne. So it's relatively a cheap feed. The starch is very high, um, being straight wheat, we're looking at 75% starch, which is very good for butyric acid production. Because it's cracked, that starch is actually very available, so that's another benefit. But when we look at protein, the protein level of this wheat is only about 14%, and the young lambs need probably above 18%. However, we're not quite sure. We're gonna see the results a bit later on because overall in the diet, the lambs are still getting high protein milk from their mothers and the pastures are probably above 25% protein. So we'll, yeah, we'll see how the results come out. With all creep feeds, it's really critical that they flow really well. When we're talking about these one to five week old lambs starting on the feeders, they really don't eat much. So it's really important that the feed in here doesn't clog up with moisture and humidity. So when we look at cracked wheat, it actually it flows quite well. We haven't cracked it so much that there's a lot of dust 
in this sample so we're hoping it um, flows consistently through the feeders. Feed type 2 is straight wheat so the benefit of this one is that it's simply that $320 a tonne so it's slightly cheaper than the cracked wheat. It has that high starch component of 75% however for the microbes to get through the starch they first got to break through the wall of the grain so this could limit the ability of that early butyric acid production which might uh, maybe not be as fast at uh, developing the rumen wall. Um, so again protein level uh, is about 14% so this could also limit how much lambs grow however if we're talking about feed flow through the feeders this works excellent um, flows wet days humid days it's going to continue to flow so convenience wise can be really good and a lot of farmers may already have some wheat stored on their farm so really convenient when they go to start creep feeding for feeder three we have a commercial mix made by our local feed company um, we have some cracked wheat cracked barley also some cracked maize as the main starch types in the feed it also has um, some good bypass protein sources um, of soybean meal and canola meal so this feed comes out at about $550 delivered to farm its protein level is 18% so it's got a great protein the starch level isn't quite as high as the other wheat uh, feed types we've got so that might potentially have a small effect on rumen development um, however it is um, uh, got the protein there that the young lambs require when re in regards to the flow through the feeders it has um, a bit more fine material so what that might mean is that on a more regular basis perhaps perhaps on a weekly basis we need to come and make sure that the feed is flowing through the licking area it is less of an issue when the adjusters are quite open this is feed type 4 it is made by another local feed company similar to the previous one we looked at it's got barley um, wheat and corn as the main starch types it's also got the mineral vitamin component to the to the diet um, proteins above 18 percent so that's very good for young stock the starch isn't quite as high as the wheat varieties we showed in options feed types one and two might just notice compared to the last commercial mix it is a little bit finer so it's going to be interesting to see what difference that makes to growth rates and also how often we need to clean the feeders feed type 5 is 50% wheat and 50% lamb finishing pallets so the wheat component of the diet about $320 a ton and the lamb finishing pallets are about $460 a ton so when we average those out we come up with this ration costing about $390 a ton yet we have to mix that on our farm so it's a little bit more inconvenient than say straight wheat or or a commercial mix feed the benefit of having the wheat in it is to help it flow through the feeders so when the lambs are really young they're only eating 10 to 20 to 30 grams a day for the first three weeks and with some humid and wet weather the pellets can swell so having the barrier the wheat between them can stop the pellets sticking together and having a consistent flow so that's a really important component of the diet a lot of our customers use this kind of ration and had a lot of success with it so it's going to be really interesting to compare against the other feeds as far as starch goes the wheat about 75 percent lamb finishing pellets about 45 percent so overall the starch component in the diet is about 60 percent so quite quite reasonable and the availability the whole wheat initially it isn't very available to the young animals however the starch is quite available in the pellets because it's made up of 
broken down, largely broken down pieces of grain. So the microbes can attach to the starch which is available on the outside of these pallets. Finally, we've got feed type six. This is made up of 80% cracked wheat and 20% a protein pellet. The protein pellet's mainly made up of canola meal and overall is 30% protein. So when we combine the protein and average it out, it's 18% uh, protein, similar to feed types four and five. When we talk about starch availability, being cracked, it's very good. And overall starch variety is approximately 60% um, starch. So that's uh, quite high as well. Feed flow should work quite well. Um, it's not something we've used before, but as the cracked grain isn't too um, demolished, it should hold together and flow through the feeders quite well. That concludes the setup of the experiment with the six different feed types. The next step for us now is to get all the mobs back into the yards and weigh all the lambs at 40 days of age. So in this 40 day period, they're gonna be having ad lib access to their creep feed. So by the end of those 40 days, they might be reaching an average of intake of 200 grams a day. And after that 40 day period, we'll bring them back into the paddocks for another 40 days up until weaning and we'll start controlling the ration to between probably 150 and 200 grams a day, something that's uh, gonna keep them growing really well and help their rumen, yet not cost too much with um, supplementary feeding.